being in DJ culture all the years, seeing Record Store Day evolve from people I've admired for a long time, like Eric, Eric Levin from Criminal Records in Atlanta, whose record store encompassed a lot of different things that would bring somebody in to a store. I could not even leave his book section, much less where he sold music, much less where somebody might have performed a song or two, much less where you could find vinyl. And Eric is a major factor in making me really, really understand how to communicate to a nation or really a world full of record stores who are developing a revolutionary model. Revolutionary because it was being able to take in consideration what a store should be and how a record store should be. It's beyond records, a cultural center in fact, extension of a library that either has more to offer than a library. And then also independent artists like Andy DeFranco, J Live, uh, atmosphere and rhyme sayers, you know, uh, I've always been aware of their works and also see them be able to cut through um, the blizzard of, of, of the major saturation, the major super chains and also configuration change. And quite clearly that, that, that influenced me to be involved on the periphery of Record Store Day, but now to be named ambassador in 2014. I think we're at a, a, a turning point in the cutting edge of how a revolutionary aspect of music should be when it comes down to people getting music. From the beginning of Public Enemy's time, we've always participated in record store signings, record store performances. Record stores are major in the early development of Public Enemy all the way to the last performance that we did in the record store, which was Rough Trade in, in, in London, which is a great place as well. So Public Enemy has been involved. It's 27 years since 1987.